All right. So, all righty. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining. Uh, my name is Theo Kanalopoulos. Uh, I have the absolute pleasure today of speaking with an incredible man, Tom Bilyeu, um, well-known entrepreneur, well best known for co-founding uh, Quest Nutrition, obviously Impact Theory, and what we're talking about mostly today, Impact Theory Founders Key. Welcome, Tom. Thank you for having me, man. I'm excited to be here. Mate, it's great to have you, especially now knowing that you've got a Cypriot wife and we can, we can chat a little bit in Greek afterwards right? if we like. Exactly. I love it. <laughs> well done, mate. So look, um, you know, obviously today we're speaking about building IP uh, in Web3. You have done an incredible job um, building IP a couple of times around. Um, and obviously you've got the platform through, uh, through Impact Theory. And, and I wanted to really understand, you know, what was the, the, the tipping point to get you to really pull the trigger and get going um, into, into the founder's key. I got, to, I got to know you through an absolute hero of mine, uh, Gary V. You've been, obviously, you guys have been doing stuff together for a long time. And I know that he's done an incredible uh, project from a utility standpoint, and you've packed a lot of utility into yours as well. So I'd be really keen to understand how you've bridged that. And I think it's, you know, talk about it, you know, how you, how it's influencing uh, more and more projects to move that way as well. Yeah. So it, it's what web three is going to be is such a, an incredibly expansive technology that allows for people to create basically anything you want. And so when we were looking at it, we knew we wanted to do utility because we have a studio approach. So, you know, a lot of people were building out one piece of IP and then, you know, they'll see what they do from there. But for us, we really knew that we didn't want to be a one trick pony. We didn't want just one thing. We were going to be here for the long haul. And so we wanted to create the keys, which would act as an umbrella mm. for everything that we're going to build in the future. We already have like, in active development, I think we have seven projects now, and then we've got more queued up behind that. And so we knew that over the years, we're going to be rolling out uh, a lot of IP. And so we wanted the community to be able to get in now and be able to take advantage of that ride as we go. Uh, and so the utility really is trying to bridge all of the different things that Impact Theory does. So we do everything from pure entertainment with comic books, movies, TV shows, to um, the nonfiction stuff where we're interviewing uh, the most successful people in the world to having an actual university. And so we wanted something that could encompass all of that. And that just brings you right to the doorstep of utility. Uh, and so, yeah, we tried to pack as much future, future facing things as we could so that people could understand where we're going with all of this. No, I love that. And, and, you know, the, it's certainly, and I mentioned, you know, obviously, obviously very friends as well with that, that utility and long-term view, the one step, step you took further, and we have an incredible project by a Melbourne uh, Australian guy called Medikey, which has a, a key function as well. Oh, um, I know it well. I, I'm a Medikey holder. Uh, most of us are. Absolutely. Um, no, look, you know, Maddie's incredible and, and we love we love the um, the way that you've gone about it in terms of most people were going left. You went right in the sense of, you know, the majority of projects are PFP or there's an immediate character um, development that's, I'm not going to say one dimensional, but you've, you know, you've got your collection and that's your collection. Whereas you went out and said, we're already, we've already got this engine. We're up to something already. We want to bring this community along come in with us, you know, from, from, from day one of web three. Um, and we want to build this um, foundation and, 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 you know, brand and content with you along the way and sort of give you a, like a, you know, access to that, to that as well. Did you want to speak about what sort of influenced that? Yeah. So really, you know, looking at web three and what makes it so special. So you've got web one, which is read only. You've got web two, which is read and write. You've got yeah. web three now, which is read, write and own. Yeah. And so the way that owning works, though, I think is different than what most people are. My view on it is very different than how most people are looking at it. So most people are looking at it really as a financial investment, which I think is is not a wise strategy. And so <laughs> when you think about the high volatility, right? So even if we were going to say, and of course, being in America, I'm not saying that this is what's happening. But even if we said that these are a financial instrument like a stock then yeah. we all know that the vast majority of people that try to trade lose. 
And the people that win go into funds and indexes and they just put money in and they step back and they let it do its thing. I think there's going to be a very different approach, which is the money's amazing. The trading's amazing. It brings a lot of people and energy and dollars into the space to justify Mm -hmm. building out the infrastructure. But ultimately, people will lose enough that they're going to either start doing an index fund strategy or they're going to realize I'm in it for something else. And so I think that something else is what I call wallet aware experiences. Okay. So as an entertainment company, I'm looking at this going, hold on a second. I know what this technology is going to allow me to do. Mm-hmm. I've got a much wider breadth of IP than most of the people coming into the space. So I don't just want to lead with a PFP project. I want to do things that let me be more expansive. And so that was really giving our community a way to engage in, they don't have to engage in everything, but to, to create a hub at the center that they would be able to, you know, if it's acting as a gravitational center, they'd be able to orbit around this growing library of IP. But I wanted to make sure that the community members that get in now are able to reap the benefits of this as we build this over the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years, right? So that's the, the call to arms. That was the reason that we wanted to do that was I was like, man, if we can do that and they can really go on this ride with us and if they're in it for the long haul, then they're going to see this stuff build over time, over time, over time, and they're getting new things all along the way. And so, yeah, that was the idea behind the strategy was don't think that of this as a, a short-term trade. Look at this as the birth of a new kind of studio. I love that. Um, I also think that the naturally the, the outset, you know, sort of, sorry, coming out early and, and coming coming out with that plan and being really transparent with it and helps you've got a good winning track record for sure. Um, but by having that plan and not saying, hey, 90 days, we're making cash, you know, everyone's, everyone's super happy, but coming out and I think the way you've handled the conversations with the people that still, even though the way you went about it was very transparent, they still expected in, incredible gains up front. Um, I think that the way that, that that's gone, you've gone about things and you, sh- you can show very clearly um, the gradual in- incremental increase of the momentum of, of this particular project. Um, the commissioner of the NBL, which is our local basketball league in Australia, just mentioned um, on the segment before ours that, you know, comparing it to the dot-com era where, you know, there was a, a boom, a crash, and then a proper boom that sustained Although obviously most, if well, the whole market, if that happened, would be impacted. But the ones that are, you know, from the outset saying, "Hey, stick around with us," you know, we're 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 not going anywhere. We've proven in the past that we can do things over a prolonged period of time. I feel that that's going to have a much lesser impact on on those types of projects because people have essentially, to your point. Pay, you know, invested in it and gone to sleep and just let, let the people they trust go, go to work. Yeah, I think that is going to be a much better strategy in the long run. Mm-hmm. Um, and no one knows what Web3 is going to be, right? So even somebody like myself, I have a very clear vision. It's where I think it's going. But I know that we're, you know, to use the analogy of the internet, I know we're in, you know, 97, 99, somewhere around in there. I can't guess yet about Uber. And so we haven't had that moment and it's, we're creating something, some of it's going to work, some of it's not consumer behavior is going to change, right? Like right now you've got these early adopters are hyper educated. They know all about Bitcoin, all that, but it's going to become something different as it reaches more and more mainstream, which it inevitably will inevitably will. And As that happens, I think it just looks more like real life looks now, except you get to own a piece of it. And so what do I mean by that? Mm -hmm. So right now, people are treating it like financial instruments. And you, how many people care about what their 401k is doing? Not very many. How many people are actively trading? Not very many. Most people don't want to think about it. They just, like everybody, they want number to go up, but they're not (laughs) going to be in there in the thick of it. And so what they end up doing is... They spend their time and resources on things that are inherently fun. And right now, Web3 hasn't quite gotten to the inherently fun part yet, (laughs) but it's racing to that. And you can see companies are coming out with what I'm calling the playbook. 
And so there's going to be a playbook and it's going to look very much like getting people to invest in the story and the characters of that world, expanding that world out into what I'll call a metaverse archipelago, which will ultimately be connected, but are not being connected yet. And that's fine. But you're seeing more and more people building on the back of Unreal Engine, which I think is the only smart move. Don't like get, you know, put into a literal sandbox. Mm -hmm. And look, I own land and sandbox. So no shade at those guys. But it's like you're, you're making a closed ecosystem where people have to relearn the technology, all of that, versus using what is right now, I think, the metaverse primed technology of Unreal Engine. And you've already got tens of thousands of developers that are just ninja good with it. And then it's pretty easy to learn and get like some basic things going. So people will start creating these archipelagos. Eventually, there will be like the TCP IP version of game experiences you won't get it for actual games because there's too much balancing but for these early like metaverse experience type things you'll be able to jump from one world to another for if sure. it's in unreal your characters will render perfectly so that's where i think this is going now of course i'm saying all that knowing i can't accurately predict the future <laughs> but i can i know where the momentum is going Could have a vision too right for sure. Exactly. I, lo I love that. So speaking about vision and, and how you sort of rolled your project out, um, I love the, the, you know, the tiers that you've, that you've provided in terms of, you know, the value is clearly, um, you know, different for those that have pr been prepared to sort of put their money where their mouth is, so to speak, early on and, and really get in there. Would you, would you mind sort of t talking us through, especially for pro projects that are looking from a strategy perspective of um, maybe providing rarity and related utility or, or access, how you went about legendary, heroic and relentless and, and um, maybe they can learn something from it. Yeah, so the whole idea was to, like you said, create these three tiers that gave people that were at different places in their life, the ability to either get like all the utility in the known universe or just like, I wanna be a part of the project and you know I'm okay down here, it's far less expensive and it gets me less, but it's, you're still in the ecosystem and you're going to get, get perks. To play. So, yeah. yeah, exactly. So we broke it down. There's seven areas of um, perks is probably the easiest word to use for the all encompassing hmm. and the legendary key gets everything. And then the heroic key gets a lot of what the legendary key gets. And then there's a big gap and you've got the relentless key, which is the biggest cohort. Um, but they have much less access, but it was very, very inexpensive. So we wanted to do something where, all right, these guys are really thinking about the IP. Where is this going to go? I want to get like a ton of cool stuff over time as we go. I want to be a part of everything that you're doing. And then down on the relentless end, it was like, this is my starter kit, my foot in the door. I get to play, I get to be a part of the ecosystem and perhaps, you know, earn my way up or maybe I'm collecting based on the rarity for those cards because they're not as expensive for those keys. And so it was just gave, you know, the three different types of people, different entry points into the ecosystem. And that makes a lot of sense. Now you do get into some complexities of like, what are the different tiers? What do they mean? And so people need to be very careful about that because you have to have very clear identity for each tier to just make it really, really simple. And so like right now, people gravitate towards the, the legendary, the most expensive, and the relentless, the, you know, the inexpensive one. And so we have work to do around, no, 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 this one, like the heroic, he also has its own identity, but you mm -hmm. have to like be really good at marketing, like putting an identity around those and getting them out. So I if somebody's doing- Go Sorry, ahead. go on. No, I was just going to say, I see that in most projects, you know, the, let's say top 5% to top 3%, everyone's racing for that if they've got the, the ETH to do so. And then the four, right? It's really similar. It's, I, I think, um, you know, it's just the dynamics of, of how people are investing and collecting um, in today's age. Sorry for jumping in there. No, I mean, that's perfect insight. That's absolutely yeah. true. Um, tell us, tell us, so speaking of the, the legendary tier, obviously the, the, the top tier, um, especially essentially the God key in your, in your world, um, right to partner. Uh, lots of people would be really interested to hear that, especially, um, so for a bit of context, I have a web three agency and we're speaking to a lot of artists. I've got a, a sort of a music background and we're speaking to a lot of them and the educational pieces. I'm sure you've had conversations with people as well. 
um, knowing some of your network around what they have to actually put in if they want to give real utility around access, like what you're offering, what Gary's offering, what some some other leaders from a utility standpoint are willing to offer. Um, it's really cool to see, you know, that sort of mechanism for for people to be able to obviously they have the have to have the chops to actually for it to go somewhere, but to have that opportunity by, um, you know, investing in you essentially early on, to tell the people about the right to the partner access because I think a lot of creators and and, and project um, starters would be interested in that. Yeah, I think this is a, a huge innovation, and it was born out of frustration. So I <laughs> went and tried. Uh, to The Matrix, which is one of the most important films in my life, was at one time considered a dormant franchise. Yes. We're talking about it now. They've you know come out with another movie, but at the time it was dead. They Their own words, I'm at Warner Brothers. And they said, this is a dormant franchise. And I was like, okay, word. I've got this whole idea of how we could like boot it up as a comic book. And I wanna get the rights to do this as a comic. And they were like, yeah, no. So you would have to pay us like 500 grand for us to even have this conversation. And so I was like, wow. wow. Now I had just come off a huge business win. And so I was like, guys, Should I'm I? not like just coming off the street. Like I, I'm going to pay for all of this. I'm going to do everything on my own. And if it fails, like I'm not even going to touch your canon characters. Like I'll isolate everything over here. So it was a frustrating experience. And so I was like, all right we're going to be the easiest company to get a license from when we do this. And so the right to partner is we're going to create all, all right. this IP. What you can do, and the perfect example is one of the stories that we've put out now is Merry Mods, which is our Christmas themed uh, project. And we had people using the ideas of the right to partner. They built a Christmas wrapping company and a tree ornament company. And they took our IP and baked that in so you could get uh, Mary Mods Christmas tree ornament or Mary Mods uh, wrapping paper. Cool. And to mirror my frustration, instead of asking them to pay me $500,000 to do that, I said, we'll let you keep the first $500,000 that you make. And so we don't get a dime. Like if they make $500,000 and then tap out, we'd get nothing. Hmm. So this is like, that to me is web three. It's there are people that can create the business infrastructure, can create the IP. And then there are people that they can't or don't want to do that, mm. but man, they're really creative. And so they could take what we've created and make a wrapping paper company or t-shirts or apparel, you know, whatever, like the, the sky is really the limit. And so that is like, that is a game changer for people out there that their area of expertise is not business. It is not uh, the creation of the stories. It's instead going, that story's popping off. I know a really cool thing that I can create around that. And then if they either develop the business chops or partner with somebody that has it, they can really scale this. And so we even let people, like if you have a key, but you're not entrepreneurial and you want to partner with somebody who doesn't have a key, but they are entrepreneurial. And now you can negotiate amongst themselves, nice. but they could negotiate like a, you know, a percentage fee for the use of that key. So I think over time, it's really going to be something pretty extraordinary. I love that. The, the, the comp in the music world is, you know, the, the original artist giving their stems and letting someone remix their song. You know, it's, it's very similar and they could certainly apply that um, to, to their projects for sure. So I'm sure there's going to be many projects that will um, obviously, you know, take from that. There's other projects, of course, that are giving full commercial rights to that particular character that you own, which is different because you're continuing to build IP and it'll be across the board mm. where they'll have access to be able to leverage at it. It's, it's really something that the people really need to, need to take notice of for sure. Speaking of IP, um, you've got an over avatar project on the way within, within your um, founders key project. We just heard from uh, the NFT project manager at, the, at tennis Australia, who they did an incredible art ball projects um, and a metaverse uh, for the Australian Open. They uh, commissioned a bunch of artists in, I guess, the digital world, NFT world to design some of those balls um, that were part of, the, part of the project. Do you have anything like that um, that you're planning with, with these avatars or anything else that, that, that's sort of coming out where you might uh, engage the, the community? Uh, we, we have many surprises coming up that we can't announce yet. Okay. Uh, but yes, we, we've got some very cool things coming up for sure. Cool. cool. 
sounds like we might be wrapping up. I can hear uh, some, uh, yeah, exactly. some audio from the, uh, from the main room. Cool, cool. Sounds like we um, we've got three minutes, mate. <laughs> um, let's um, let's 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 wrap up um, with your final sort of thoughts. Um, you know, what have you got coming in 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 twenty twenty two? I know that you've got forty fifty years ahead of you, but uh, what should we be looking out for from Founders Geek? Yeah, so right now all eyes are on the Avatar project. That that is our big go to. Um, we also have the second round of Merry Mods, which we'll be returning to. And then we have a secret uh, mods project that is also in the works. Um, and then a couple other surprises here and there that'll be wrapped inside of uh, Avatar. So it's, it is going to be a very full year. Uh, and I'm really excited for people to see what we've got cooking. Awesome, mate. Well, look, you've been a great inspiration for me. My diet came from um, the way that you sort of changed your, you know, sort of missing out, missing out on dinner and stopping consuming at a particular time. And that's helped my sleep. So thank you for that. Um, from my an, pleasure. No, man, it's cool. Um, hopefully we've crossed, crossed paths in the future, but all the best with this. I'm definitely I'm going to find my way into um, the founder's keys once I move a couple of things that aren't really uh, aligning with with what I want to be involved in in the NFT space and sort of move some of that ETH into there. So I hope uh, that we can uh, cross paths again and um, all the I best with everything. Man. Bada poli, Theo. Bada poli. Nice to Thank you very much. Yasu. Cheers. All right. Cheers. Peace. Peace.